this year. We're about to go racing for the European Le Mans Series here at Spa-Francorchamps. Big lockup for third position, or second as it is now, Julien Canard, but he did very, very well not to run into the back of those two cars ahead of him. This is tippy-toe stuff for the first run out of La Source, and particularly to the rapid Eau Rouge. Our hard-charging Duncan Tappy, though, has moved from what was third on the grid up to second place, and now, if anything, holding everybody else up is Julien Canard, because looking for a way by. Matthias Kaiser in the blue and white of, uh, of Mulna Motorsport, and to the the outside line we very nearly got three abreast Mulna Motorsport into fourth position he will go into third in fact now ahead of Julian Canal and also making waves Ferdinand Habsburg for Prima Racing is the Virage uh, LMP2 car that is off the road and in the gravel safety car we will be racing very shortly indeed 17 and a half minutes into this fifth race of the season the green flags are waving on the exit of the bus stop chicane careful not to overlap before the start line but here comes duncan tappy in the dark blue and red of united order sports trying to pressurize nicholas cruton into a mistake already then it is the white and sky blue colors of mulner motorsport for lichtensteiner matthias kaiser and ferdinand Habsburg in the championship leading prema racing car number nine fourth as they head through eau rouge for the first time bit of a wiggle there for duncan and Tappy in the compression as they came up from Eau Rouge, but it's Ferdi Habsburg that got the better run up and over Radion. He's going side by side with Kaiser now for third place, and he's getting a pretty good toe from Duncan Tappy as well. Up into third, Bremer. This car is the championship leader, remember, as well. Oh, Crucial it's worse. In respect. It's worse. Well, it's is that a tyre going no, down? No, it's suspension it damage. Suspension as well. There was clearly contact with the 15 of RLRM Sport, and this could be a yet another DNF in the championship leaders' campaign. Pulling his oh, way down trouble. the racetrack now for the, the race sitter. leader and race leader. Pole sitter in GTE and a runaway That's early leader. Turn one. I think so that's spun to the outside, spun across the track, just missed that P3 car. How did she miss that? How did she miss that? So, green, green, green all around the racetrack. Here comes Habsburg, though, with a better run through Radion, and he is more than close enough now to pounce on Duncan Tappy. Tappy will do the sensible thing and stay, stay straight as a die and realises, I think, the game is up. As long as Habsburg can make the corner, he can't. Neither of the cars make the corner, in fact, and Tappy will have to go through the tyres. Well, that's the proper way of doing it, whereas Habsburg took to the grass and might say he gained an advantage. He's going to give the place back, potentially. He's slowed up sufficiently enough to do that. But look at Ben Fiscal catching both of these two guys. He is going to give it back. In amongst the confusion, but what, Ben Fiscal, Fiscal doesn't Fiscal. have to do anything. Fiscal just has to take the position if he can. So now we've got a three-car battle for this. This is great stuff. But leaving La Source corner fully side by oh! side. And now there is further contact. That's Duncan Tappy. He's in second held it. Position. He's held it. He <laughs> held on to it. He's lost the place. It's but so nevertheless, Fer uh, Fabio Shearer has gained two. Wow. In one move. And the latest traffic might have just been enough. And then this time around the outside. Into Lafania corner, looking to try and avoid the oh. contact, and they can't. And Lapierre off into the gravel. That was a forceful manoeuvre from was, Fabio Shearer. Did he need aggressive. to run as deep that into was turn aggressive. 12 as he did? Oh, that's the, that's the 21 Muller car. He's had a huge moment through Rouge Radion. Oh, there's contact. There was contact with the Rinaldi racing Ferrari oh dear, oh that dear. caused that spin. Oh, that's the tie gone. That's the tie gone. Well, that shows you how much punishment it, it, these will take on a, uh, you know, a spin that lasts so long. Well, exactly that much punishment and no more. <laughs> exactly. And uh, off into the gravel. Can't really do much about that either. Can he get through the gravel? It's a warning flag for Fabio Scherer for driving standards. Okay. Has he got the run here? Again, there was a bit more contact. Shearer running 
deliberately deep into La Source corner. We... Outside, inside trick perhaps though from Got Lapierre. Him. Got him. Can't hold him back this time and Fabio Scherer will have to concede the place. Phil Hansen did briefly lead Nicola Lapierre. So has Hansen got out of the full course yellow more readily than the Frenchman? Oh, oh look, big, 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 big lock up. up. Can't make the corner, in fact, at La Source. And Nicola Lapierre, an uncharacteristic error, has something failed big on error. the car. Has something failed on the car. The tyres all appear to be still inflated. What on earth happened there? Hit the brakes, lock up, no retardation at all. Battling GTEs here, Johnny Adam to the outside this time. He's going to make it stick and does it. Neat and tidy stuff. Oh, oh but didn't hold the position on track. He's going to have to let him go by again. And that overtake was already questionable for me because you didn't see, but Johnny had already straight line Radion, so oh, right. he gained okay. an advantage onto the straight because he didn't keep within the track limit. Oh, trouble for David Armour Hansen. Just as we were talking oh, about him. No, it's... And it's almost another full spin as he recovers. Actually did pretty well to stop that. The pendulum swinging too far. He's almost lost second. To the left. Yeah. And he's lost third. Is the Prima car through? No, it's not. So he's managed to retain third place. But now under pressure from these two cars behind, this is the battle at the moment for the final podium spot, albeit with 100 minutes to go. And a much better run for Correa and indeed Von Outer. It's Van Outert takes both. Van Outert to the inside line at Le Com corner and still undecided between 9 and 43 in his wake, but beautifully read there by Dutch driver. 65 just ahead of Pramer. I think they might have got away with uh, without incurring an un unsafe release there. Mikkel Jensen oh. on Gatting to the inside line. Can she fend him off? No, is the answer. As long as Jensen stays within the white lines, and he does just about. So Kessel Racing now back to the front. So here at the inside of a couple of LMP. Oh, oh, sideways and into the back and right in front of the race leader, Tom Gamble, who did manage to find his way through the carnage. But that was a mistake from Alex Capadia in the number five car clattering the back the third of, place car of James Littlejohn who's going to win in LMP2 Pro-Am here we go Close this is the start of the last lap and this could be drama right at the end here comes Will from a long way back oh. looking to try and avoid the contact at the first corner Rivera saw him coming and Rivera gets better drive off the corner there was an element there of Will Stevens realising that was pretty full on and maybe needed to get out of it. So up towards the bus stop chicane and United Order Sports, who I felt looked pretty strong in qualifying yesterday. Phil Hansen was unhappy at the time. He'll be much, much cheerier though now because United Order Sports will take victory for the first time this season. There is the 13, a hat trick of wins for Inter Europol. What a day it's been for them. Here, though, is still the battle, Johnny, for LMP2 Prime. He's got to look, look, try to look at the inside. Not decided yet. Here comes Will Stevens. That would have been brave on the inside of Blanchemont corner. Wants to be as close as possible into the bus stop. There's also a Porsche from, Chris, from Christian Reed's team, the 77, being driven by Zach Robichon in the, uh, to the right and the left we go. Side by side, very nearly. Will Stevens left enough. It's going to be nip it's and got him. It's got him. It's so close. He's got him. Across the line, have they not? He did get him. Will Stevens wins Pro-Am by 42 thousandths of a second. Unbelievable finish. Four hours, 42 thousandths of a second. He forced him just a bit wide uh, on the exit of the, the final element of the bus stop, waiting here for the Kessel Racing car to come home as the winners in GTE. Fine run from them. Once again, the Iron Dame second, and it will be absolute racing, completing the podium with the 18 Porsche. Confirmation, United winning from the Inter Europol Prema battle. Inter Europol winners in LMP3 though, and Kessel Racing taking GTE victory. Victory at last for Duncan Tappy, Tom Gamble, and Phil Hansen.
Yeah, it's it's been a challenging year to say the, to say the least. Um, we felt we were strong all weekend long from the beginning on, on Wednesday all the way through to now. Um, qualifying wasn't great, but you know the guys did a great job. Duncan got us into second, and and it really came alive in the cold conditions. So um, yeah, it was ours to lose today, and I think we really maximised what we did. United finally make it to the top step of the podium, but second for Inter Europol and third for Prema means that the championship narrowly remains alive for the final race in Portimao. <laughs> Chase for the race in LMP2, Alessio Rivera leading into the final corner out, breaking himself. Will Stevens cutting back on the inside, drag race to the line, it's going to be close, very close. And Stevens and Racing Team Turkey take it by 42 thousandths of a second after four hours of racing. Wow, LMP2 Pro-Am win for Racing Team Turkey from AF Corsa and 47 Algarve Pro in third, despite that last lap drive through. So Racing Team Turkey maintain their points advantage. Victory for Kessel Racing in GTE, Mikkel Jensen sealing the deal. After the race was started with that lurid spin for new boy Konrad Grunewald, replacing Takeshi Kimura here in Spa. Yeah, it was a tough race. Uh, Conrad made it a little bit exciting in the Rouge. Um, so very happy we, we actually managed to get through that. We were very hit, uh, close to get hit from the Iron Links car. And after that, we just tried to manage the pace. Um, we knew we had a good good lineup to, to manage towards the end. Um, and yeah, amazing to, to get our first deal mess in here. Takeshi Kimura racing in another championship in Japan. So Conrad stepping in. They take the top step of the podium from Iron Links with absolute racing, the top Porsche in third place. But Proton competition with the 77 Porsche are the points leaders as we head to the season finale in Portimao. Their LMP2 teammates took second overall. Inter Europol's LMP3 team claimed victory in their class. Spa was a good weekend for the Polish team. And after a tough start to the year, that is their third straight win. Oh, it feels amazing. It's one of my favorite tracks too. It's my birthday race weekend, so it's the ideal way to finish it off. Uh, now we are leading the championship too by 17 points, I think. So it's been an ideal weekend. The car was fantastic. The team did an amazing job. So uh, this guy, these two guys did an amazing job. He was rapid at the end. So very, very happy with it. And yeah. Third went to Nielsen's Tony Wells and James Little John. DKR's Sebastian Alvarez, Alexander Bukansov, and Tom van Rompuy finished second in car number four. But a third straight win for Inter Europol puts Nicola Pino, Charlie Cruz and Guillermo Oliveira firmly on course to try and clinch the title in Portugal.